Hi, everybody. I'm Fernanda Ribeiro from Shimano's Europe, uh, integration specialist. I'm joined here today by Igor and Hido, and we'll be presenting the session on Shimano's Unlocks Innovation with Integrated Processes. Brief introduction uh, on Shimano. We are a company which is core mission is to promote the health and happiness of people through the connection to nature. Uh, Shimano is an international manufacturer and distributor of cycling and fishing equipments uh, and was born, so it was founded more than 100 years ago in Japan. To start, I would like to set the scenario of the Shimano customer journey. As Shimano is a business-to-business -business type of commerce, whenever an end customer wishes to purchase a new Shimano product, like a bike wheel or a fishing accessory, uh, he or she connects to our dealers and distributor partners like the big sports shops that most of us know. In that journey, the most common questions that can pop up in the end customer's head is, are there the products that I want to buy available in the shop? If I'm ordering, when is my order going to be delivered in my house? These kind of questions, they travel through the scenario. They go from the customer to the shops, from the shops to Shimano. This is where we see the power of data integration because the answers, they should travel back to the customer. The grand idea here is how can we, with effectiveness and efficiency, connect Shimano to the end customer. But that is where we also see the ecosystem's complexity that we are living in. Specifically for Shimano, our environment today, we already deal with more than 12 million different types of messages being shipped around Shimano and our, and our shops. All that complexity, the volume of messages, the volume of customers, also combined with the different types of solutions we have uh, within Shimano today, yeah, that is what creates our business challenges. When looking for the business goals on improving and growing our businesses, that is directly connected to the integration uh, that we have with our customers. Uh, when we started trying to learn where we were, uh, we found and we detail all the challenges that we were already facing uh, with the 12 million messages that are already up to speed. The challenges, they go from all those messages. There's no governance. There's no standards uh, within the technologies if, that we are using. With that, the scenario is also very complex based on the support chain because we have more than five different types of solutions. Uh, most of them has no type of monitoring uh, and generates a lot of complexity when we are talking about maintenance and support. Most, more than 75% of today's uh, integrations, they are connected to through FTPs, uh, like one-to-one -one type of solutions. Those ones, apart from not being scalable, they are also not secure and not reliable. And all of that generates in a very long time to onboard customers because most of the solutions are one-to-one -one based. Every time a new customer co comes in, we need to build something specifically for it. Uh, so with the understanding of all of those challenges, that is where our business case was born. The grand idea was to find the enterprise solution uh, to improve our customer experience and for that, we have opened an RFP process. Within that RFP, SAP was one of its participants. And that is where we met Acoral, that is one of SAP's implementation partners. With Acoral, we have done some proof of concepts. That is where we saw the possibility of BTP being the platform for us. However, more than tech for tech, the grand idea was to see the approach how can we solve in a process perspective or in the approach of implementations, the business challenges that we were having? And Acorel uh, gladly uh, showed us uh, their healthy data flow approach. And I can, I want to bring Hido to expand a little bit on it. Hey, thank you, Fernanda. Uh, let me first start to introduce myself. My name is Hido Koopman. I'm an software integration architect at Acorel. Acorel is Dutch number one GX partner in the Netherlands. 
we're 100 plus consultant big. We serve over 100 plus different customers in 20 different industries. We have two locations in the Netherlands and we're of course 100% committed. And the mission is to let the organizations excel by creating the most powerful customer experience. And with that, we create healthy data flows using SAP technology. The questions Shimano had are typical uh, questions a customer has ju- during his customer journey. Uh, are the products available? When will my order be delivered? Uh, and in this case, uh, we positioned the sub b to b in order to improve that process and that customer experience. We came up with the LT data flow approach and uh, to introduce that, we need to take a look at the upper part of the, our slide. There you see four building blocks. This is part of a picture of an area in Barcelona. It's, it's an, a neighborhood called Example, which means extension. Barcelona was uh, during the 1900s facing a, a growth problem uh, and they, they, they wanted to see how they would go overcome that growth problem. And they would take into account the optimum of air, sunlight, living, and traffic. And they start building one of these blocks. And then they took all their learnings and experience into the next one, the next one, and eventually created a whole area, which was an optimum of air, sunlight, uh, transport, and living. And that's also what we did with the healthy data flows approach. We took all our experience from the past to create a sustainable solution approach for also Shimano. But first, have a look at the topics we, we were facing. Huh? For example, data to information and data on its own is just raw unprocessed facts and data alone lacks any significance until it's transformed into information which can be interpreted. Another one is uh, leveraging real-time integration. Uh, real-time integration enable timely updates and actions which can be taken based on the most current of, uh, information available. Eventually, we need to take into account how do we add value to the business. And adding value to the business is all about increasing efficiency or improving decision-making process, enabling innovation, and eventually to strengthen the customer experience. And of course, this can only be done by eliminating data silos. Huh? Eliminating data silos is needed to achieve efficient data processing and support the business process. Now, if we take a look at the definition of the, our healthy data flow approach, there are six key elements to it. Uh, and the first is, how well can we support the business objective? Uh, decisions and actions are made based on, on data which is available. And the consequence can be enormous if we take decisions which are made based on false or in- incorrect data. So it's important to have the right data at the right time for, to the right person. Uh, everything nowadays is moving cool or fast and nothing is so much more frustrated when you, you, you take decisions which are uh, based on, on data from the past. And of course, it all needs to be to the right person who can interpret it, the information in the right way. Well, eventually, it should support the decision-making process, and uh, we can only achieve that when all the systems function as one instead of having information silos. Now, if you put all these key elements into a definition, we come to the following definition. Uh, this yeah, healthy data flows are enabled by seamless integration of systems to help achieve business objectives by providing the right data to the right person at the right time in order to support that decision-making process. Now, what are the key elements to the healthy data flows pros? Of course, it starts with the way of working between IT and business. The way of working is actually the foundation of of the success of an integration project. We still always start with, we need to analyze the processes by a business analyst, for example. And doing that, we, we get to know and understand the process and understand the customer better. And we come into, so, okay, which systems are there? Which process steps are taken? But what, what data is flowing through that system? And aligning all that way of working in order to get the understanding of the business process is very important. Next one is the data integrity. And the integration should be secure, ensure their current consistency, because the data is flowing through different systems. Huh? And we should prevent data loss on, or unauthorized uh, access during uh, the integration process. And eventually you would like to safeguard sensitive data through encryption, access control, and compliance with the data protection regulations. Now, eventually, we, we need to have a scalable and flexible solution. A healthy data flow approach should be scalable and adaptable to accommodate future changes. Eh? 
for the agility of the business. Uh, it should, for example, it should support the addition or removal of system uh, components without disrupting the overall integration framework. It should not be the case that we add or remove a system, we need to redo everything again. The security, implement yeah, robust security measures to protect that sensitive data during the integration. Eh? And think about encryption, authentication, access control. In that, we should protect our data as well as we can. Another very important element is the monitoring and maintenance. Eh? We should have a continuous monitoring and maintenance uh, process in place. We, that's crucial for the healthy data flows approach. Uh, we should track the system performance, uh, but also identify and resolve issues promptly. Uh, that can only be done if we at least are able to recognize the issues very fast and ensure that the integration remain stable and reliable over time. Uh, one last part is the documentation. It, it seems very obviously, but maintaining comprehensive documentation about the integrated data is essential. Huh? Uh, this includes information about uh, which systems are used, uh, what are the data sources, even the transformations, business rules, but also uh, the data governance and troubleshooting for even potential future enhancement. With that documentation, we're able to yeah, make sure that we have a healthy data flow in place. How do we do that? It's a, that approach is it's a three-step way of approach. Think, do, act. And with think phase, we we focus on the reference architecture. Reference architecture is all about how are we going to organize the system landscape, IT landscape. And based on that, we're going to design the IT landscape. And we do that using, amongst others, the ESA M integration solution advisor methodology. Uh, and that may, comes to that we create a blueprint uh, that provides guidelines, standards, and best practices for designing and implementing IT integrations and solutions within an organization. What it does, it, it defines the structure, components, relationship, and all the interactions of various IT systems to ensure consistency and alignment with the organization goals and strategy. And the purpose of the IT reference architecture is to establish a common understanding and language for IT professionals uh, involved in the design, development, and deployment and maintenance of those integrations. It serves as a reference point for decision making and facilitates the efficient utilization of IT resources. We all know what to do at what stage. We don't need to discuss that any further. As some of the key components of an IT reference architecture may include uh, uh, defining the software application model or service needed to fulfill specific business functions or processes. It covers the data models, databases, data management, everything related to the data itself. And eventually, you define the mechanism and standards for integration different IT systems and application services up front. Eventually, the last part is to make sure that we have a governance in place to make sure that we build everything in line what we agreed upon. The reference architecture is all about setting a common understanding and doing it up front. Make sure that we don't need to do it during the development phase or whatsoever. If you have it up front, you'll make sure that you prevent all kinds of delays as there is already a common understanding for your current project, but also for projects which are there after that. The next one is you go into the do phase. and the do phase, you build your actual IT landscape based on the designs you, you put down on the, in the think phase. And eventually, in, in the act phase, you make sure that you have the continuous monitoring in place. My colleague Igor Mitrovic will, will go into more depth in this one. Uh, of course, with the healthy data flows approach, we already have uh, achieved the following business outcomes. We achieved business agility. We were able to react better on uh, the business needs. We created op operational stability and also consistent processes. Of course, everything in a secure way uh, because the implementation was done right, uh, which made sure that we have the right data at the right time for the right person available in a future-proof way so that we can start working more on innovation. And now I will hand it over to my colleague, Igor Mitrovic. Hi, everybody. My name is Igor Mitrovic. And as Hido, I am SAP BTP architect at Acorel. Uh, together with Hido, Fernanda, and uh, Acorel Shimano team members, uh, we're on the journey of implementing uh, SAP BTP and healthy data approach at Shimano. The journey towards establishing a future-proof integration landscape was not without obstacles. Shimano, like many other companies in today's fast-paced business environment, 
need a robust and agile solution to adapt to ever-changing market demands. With the help of BTP and Aquarel Healthy Data Flows approach, we managed to transform the way Shimano approached integration. So what are the functionalities that SAP Business Technology Platform provides? It helps you streamline your processes. It can provide creation of extensions. And as Hido mentioned before, it can add data to, it can create data to value. So putting all these things together, as Hido explained in a healthy data approach, and with the business challenges that Shimano came up with, what Fernanda explained, we needed to put these things together. So I would like to now tell you a little more or something about it. What kind of functionalities did we use? In which way did we use them? And still are using for the future development. One of the most significant achievements resulting from the adoption of SAP ATP was the dramatic reduction on offboarding times for customers and retailers. The decrease not only boosted the operational efficiency, but also enhanced the customer satisfaction. By leveraging SAP products such as SAP Cloud Integration and API Management, Shimano created a cohesive and scalable set of integrations. These integrations weren't just a one-off solution. They were uh, designed to be reusable, ensuring that Shimano could adapt swiftly to the new projects and evolving business needs. Uh, the beauty of this approach lies in, in its uh, flexibility. With the SAP B2B, Shimano's integration landscape became a more dynamic foundation for uh, future projects. What do I mean by that? As new initiatives emerge within the company, they no longer face the time-consuming task of building integrations from scratch. Instead of they could tap into the existing integrations, accelerating project timelines and optimizing costs. We experienced that with the new project for the new CRM implementation. So this not only saved valuable resources, but also enabled Shimano to be more agile and responsive to the market changes. To further enhance monitoring and operational support, Shimano turned to our very own developed tools such as Monitoring Tool, which included SAP functionalities and tools such as Build Work Zone, SAP Business Application Studio, and SAP Workflow Management. These extensions provided a comprehensive view of integration processes, offering a valuable insights into message volumes, error trends, and overall performance. Armed with this data, Shimano IT teams could proactively address issues, streamline processes, and ensure the smooth functioning of their integration landscape. As Kido always ma mentioned, and, and Fernanda in, in her introduction, security has always been a paramount concern in the world of data integration. Here again, SAP BTP played a crucial role in fortifying Shimano's data flows. Through the API management, Shimano not only heightened the level of security, but also introduced the essential features like policies and quotas. These measures were especially effective for business critical processes like order to cash, where data integrity is not negotiable. In conclusion, the adoption of SAP BTP has, has been a transformative journey for Shimano. It not only resolved immediate challenges, but also set the stage for a future where integration is a strategic asset, not a stumbling block, by reducing onboarding times, fostering flexibility, and enhancing security, SAP BTP has empowered Shimano to thrive in a rapidly evolving business landscape. As they continue to expand their horizons and explore new opportunities, their integration landscape will stand as a testament to the power of innovation collaboration. And we are more than happy to have them aboard as a customer. Now, this is just a couple of words, and I will ask to Fernanda to finalize it and see what are the actual results of all these things implemented and still being implemented. So I would like to give the word back to Fernanda. Thank you, Igor. Yeah, so following out the approach that Hido mentioned and using all the tools that Igor uh, showed us, we were able to already collect and measure these following results within Shimano. We can see already 97% of cost, avo cost avoidances uh, based on the new type of cost a strategy that we are having within a uh, BTP integration platform. We have already implemented more than, yeah, 32 interfaces. And I was actually saying more than 32 because, yeah, we are at this time already building more interfaces. And the last but not least, we have reduced 50% of the time of customer onboarding, which is actually uh, driving us very closely 
uh, to our goals uh, around customer experience and the digital transformation. This has been a quite a big journey, full of challenges, but for sure also full of great results. Yeah, so this was a bit of our results. Thank you for listening to the session. Uh, thank you, Rido and Igor, for participating with me. Hope you guys have a great tech hat. <laughs>